Well, welcome to Thrive Church. I'm so excited to be here. Are you excited to be here today? And I, I am so excited to be here, and God is doing some amazing things. If you don't know me, I'm Judah, the lead pastor here at Thrive Church, and we want to welcome you here. Also, uh, coming up soon, we have our Christmas services. We got a bunch of them uh, coming up uh, on, let's see, December 19th and December 22nd. There's going to be, I think, six services total over both locations. But what I would encourage you to do between now and then is to be prayerfully considering who you can invite to these services. You know, there's a lot of people that are maybe uh, either resistant to coming to church or maybe you're nervous to invite people to church on a regular basis, and that's okay, I get it. But we wanna create an environment where you can invite people and what better time than Christmas where you can kind of guilt people just a little bit and just say, it's, it's Jesus' birthday for crying out loud, you belong in church, so come. So, uh, so whatever you gotta do, if you gotta offer to buy them breakfast or lunch or dinner to do it, bribe them, whatever you can do. But I would encourage you even to get a few people in mind and be praying for them in the coming weeks. Not just that they come, but that their hearts are opened to the message that we have. We're going to be talking about Jesus is King. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the hope for all the problems that we face. So it's going to be an exciting time. So we would encourage you to do that. Also, uh, we've been talking about our upcoming uh, New Britain campus launch, which we're so thrilled about. And uh, that's going to be kicking off in the new year. But next week, um, at all of our services and locations, we're actually going to be uh, gathering, you know, together to uh, collect some uh, resources for that. So I would encourage you between now and then to be seeking God if you should invest and contribute to what we're doing there. You know, it costs around $40,000 to launch a campus and, uh, and, and it can, you know, we don't like to talk about money. I don't like to talk about money that much, but here's the thing. That's what it takes to reach people. It takes resources. And there's people that have paid the way so that we can be here where we are now and launching the church and purchasing facilities and even buying chairs. And so here's an opportunity to invest in what God is doing in another city. And, uh, and I have just great expectations of what God is gonna be doing there. So uh, that'll be next week uh, at all of these services as well. We're, we're in a series right now called Finding Peace, Finding Peace. And, uh, you know, whenever I'm training uh, campus pastors, uh, we talk through public speaking and, and things to say to people when they get on the stage. And, and one of the, the forbidden phrases, although it seems to get broken from time to time, is, uh, is I said, don't get up on the stage and say, how's everybody doing, right? I, and you know why I say that? Because it's like, like there, there's really no good answer. Like, how, how, do, how does everybody answer that? Somebody's like, fine, I'm okay, decent, I'm horrible. Like, like, like what do we say? We just all kind of like, ah, like, how's everybody doing? Ah, you know, but, but I have... I, I'm going to break my own rule today and say, how are you doing, okay? How are you doing? You don't have to answer me. Or, you know, you can just say, ah, how you doing? Ah. Okay, good. Um, probably the most honest answer anyway, because, you know, we, we ask the question, how are you doing? And, and oftentimes, you know what the expected response is? I'm doing good. I'm doing fine. I'm doing okay, right? Like, like if somebody says, not so good. I'm like, okay, see you later. Like, I, I don't want to hear the rest of this, right? Like, we, we, we're, we're just making small talk. How are you doing? But I wonder today, how are you doing really? Do you have peace in your life? Are you experiencing peace? What kind of things bring you peace? Have you seen peace? It's funny because if you have an infant and you go out somewhere and, and you have the infant in the car seat and they're sleeping, People come up and they say the dumbest things. Like they come up and say, wow, he looks so peaceful. Like, like, are you kidding me? Like, like you didn't see him an hour ago, okay? When he wasn't so peaceful. Right now, it, it, yeah, he seems peaceful. But let me tell you, that little peaceful kid is a monster when they wake up and they need a diaper change or they're hungry or whatever else. What makes you feel peace? For some of you, you know what you know feels peace? Sitting around a fire. Isn't that nice? Sitting around a fire, smelling the smoke. That's peaceful. Well, unless if it's your house burning down, then, then it's not so peaceful anymore if that's the fire. Uh, how about water? Anybody like water, like being near water? I love being near the water. I love being out on my boat on the water or, or even just sitting on the shore. Isn't it peaceful to, to sit on the, the shore on the beach? Maybe you have a drink and you're, you're listening to the waves and you're seeing the water as you watch the sunset. I mean, wouldn't that be 
peaceful to, to be in Jamaica right now, sitting on the beach enjoying the sunset, except for the fact that Jamaica has the second highest murder rate in the world. I, I mean, I mean, you know, you think if anywhere should have peace, it should be a beautiful island. But no, no, they don't have they don't have peace. So are you at peace? Do you have peace? You know, the, the ir- irony of this is just being honest here. Like, today, I didn't have much peace preparing to talk about peace. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm so nervous. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this all together. And, and I was nervous. And sometimes, even when we're thinking about being peaceful, we don't have peace. Do you have peace or, or are you in turmoil in your life? Maybe you're experiencing stress because of decisions that you have to make or, or things that are coming up in your future you have stress about. Maybe it's uncertainty for the future. We have worry. Oh yeah, I'm worried about things. I won't even ask how many people are worried about something. Are we afraid of something? But do we have peace? What's bothering you right now? What keeps you up at night? What's bothering you? Maybe it's finances. I mean, we're, we're in the holiday season. And, and, and we got to go out and spend money that we don't have to impress people we don't like. And, and we spend all this money. Oh, this is, this is not giving me peace right now. Maybe you don't have peace in your relationships. Maybe there's tension between parent and child or siblings or coworkers. Maybe you don't have peace about the grades that you wish you were getting, but you're not getting. Maybe you don't have peace about your, your health. So the question for today is, can we experience peace in our present. Now, I normally I don't do a two-part service. Normally, when I when I preach, the service is all self-contained in that one. This is an exception, okay? This is part one. Next week will be part two. So if you miss next week, you actually miss the whole second half of the sermon, okay? So, so no pressure, but I would encourage you to come back next week, okay? Um, because, because this is peace in the present, but next week's peace in the present, part two. And, and if you miss that, you might miss the most important part of this. But can we experience peace in the present? Can we experience peace right now, today, in the day-to-day, in the ups and downs of life, in the storms and tragedies of life? Can we experience peace that God has for us? In your notes, God wants us to be a people marked by peace. Marked by peace. Have you ever seen someone that's, that's so peaceful? They're even going through difficult times, and, and they're just at peace. They're experiencing peace. In the Old Testament, there was a man named King David. King David uh, was from the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, before Jesus came on the scene. Perhaps you heard of of his great fight with Goliath the giant where he killed a a giant. He fought him with a a sling and a stone. Well, later he became the king of Israel, the second king Israel ever had. And God had anointed him to be king. He was a great king. He ruled for many years, but then they had a problem. And the problem came from a man named Absalom, and Absalom was David's son. David's son uh, brought up a conspiracy. He started to, 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 to cause division in the land of Israel. He would go around, and he would win the hearts of the people over to him. He said, if you want justice, come to me. The king, he doesn't have time for you. He doesn't want to hear your problems. Come to me, and I will settle things. I will help you. And the Bible teaches us, that Absalom won the hearts of the people, but he had the intention to overthrow the kingdom. So he began to amass an army together, and the plan was essentially to hunt down King David, to hunt down his own father, to put him to death so that he could take over the crown. Imagine living like that. Imagine living in a way where where your son is, is hunting you down to kill you. Imagine that, I mean, how do you sleep at night knowing somebody wants to kill you? How do you sleep at night not only knowing somebody wants to kill you, but there's an army of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And you know what scripture says? It said they didn't even want to fight the army. All they wanted was one person, and that was David. They wanted him, and they wanted him dead. And now this whole insurrection is led by his son, Absalom. Now David, not only was he a king, but he was a musician, and he liked to write songs. And here's a song that David wrote during this time when his son with thousands and thousands of people are hunting him down literally to find him, to kill him, and to take the throne. And it's in Psalm chapter three, verse one. He says, O Lord, 
I have so many enemies. Have you ever felt like that? I have so many enemies. I got all these haters. You know, people say online, oh, all my haters. It's just because somebody once said something kind of mean to you, and we call them haters. I mean, he really had legitimate enemies, people that wanted to kill him. Oh, Lord, I have so many enemies. So many are against me. So many are saying, God will never rescue him. Interlude. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory. You're the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept. Yet I awoke in safety for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every side. Isn't that a beautiful picture of peace? He's saying, I got 10,000 soldiers that are coming after me. You know what I did though? I laid down and I got a good night's sleep and I awoke and I felt safety. Why? Because the Lord was watching over me. Can we experience peace in difficult times? Can we experience calmness? Can we experience tranquility even when we're under attack? Can we experience that? Can we experience that? See, David found rest. David found peace. He found that in God. He found that in the Lord. He found that because the Lord was watching over him. And even in this difficult time, even when people were coming against him, he had peace. See, we can be at peace in our country, like us as individuals. We can feel peaceful because we realize that there's a greater force called our our armed forces that are watching over us, called our, our police department watching over us, we can live in reasonable peace because we know someone has power and they are watching over us. I might be afraid to walk down the road at nighttime, but if I have someone who's big and strong and carries a big stick and, and they're, they're looking out for me, I can walk with confidence, right? I can walk with confidence because I know that someone is there that has my back. In your notes, you can write this down that I can be at peace in a dark time because I know who has my back. I know that God has my back. I know that the Lord is for me. As David says, I, I can sleep even when armies are coming after me. I can sleep and I can wake rested and in safety because the Lord is watching out for me. See, David was a warrior. David was strong. David was good in battle, but he did not depend on his own ability to bring peace. He was reliant on God. He was reliant on God, and since he relied on God, God defeated the enemies. God eliminated this threat, and David was able to keep the throne. See, we can be at peace in our lives knowing that God is in control. When I know that God is in control, I don't have to worry. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to live in fear. I can live in peace because I know that God is in control and that he is watching and working in every situation. Did you know there's nothing that God does not see? The difficulties that you're facing, God sees that. He sees the storms that you're going through. He sees the hardships. In your notes, God may not bring the storm, but he will certainly give you peace during the storm. He will give you peace in the storm. He didn't bring all those oppositions against you, but he will give you peace even when we're going through difficult times. As it says in Romans 8, 28, this is one of my favorite Bible verses. It says, and we know that God causes, what does it say? Everything, not just most things, not just some things, not just uh, something every now and then. He says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for what? For the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So, so what's, the, what's the, 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 the criteria here? Why, for who, uh, which people will God work it all together for good? It says he will work things together for good for those who, underline these two words, love God, and then those who are called according to his purpose. If you love God and you're pursuing his purpose, you're pursuing his kingdom, you're living for his glory, he promises, he says, I will work everything together for good. I will work everything together for good. Now, now what this does not say, some people wanted to say this, but what it does not say is it doesn't say only good things will happen, right? It doesn't say, oh, everything's gonna be good. Everything's gonna be easy. No, it doesn't say that. It says, he will work everything together for good. He doesn't say storms aren't gonna come. He doesn't say you're not gonna be attacked. He doesn't say you're not gonna go through hardship. You're not gonna go through difficulty. He says you will go through that, but it's gonna work out because someone's got your back, because God has your back. 
And when we keep our eyes on God, when we love God, and when we keep our purpose aligned with his, when we're seeking his will in all that we do, he promises that he will work these things out. And as a result, we can experience peace. We can experience peace in a difficult time saying, I don't know how God is going to work this out, but I do know that he has promised. He's promised to work all these things for good because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. I'm called. And what we need to do sometimes, we need to hit the pause. You ever do that? You know, when, when I was a kid, we didn't have this when we watched TV, right? You just watched TV, and if you missed it, you missed it, right? Like, like that was it. You had a time bathroom breaks and the commercials because it's like, I got to get back in order. I can't just pause live TV. Now we can pause everything, but here's something else we need to pause. It's in your notes. We need to pause in order to experience peace. We need to push pause. We need to push pause. Say, I, I need to pause things for just a moment. I need to step back for just a moment to experience peace. I need to pause some things. Go back for a second to Psalm 3, 4. Remember, I was just reading this about David, the song that David wrote. He says, I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain interlude. This was a song. He's saying interlude. It's like saying guitar solo, okay? You know, or harp solo, whatever they soloed on back then. I don't know. He says, interlude. What is he saying? He says, stop, pause, pause for just a minute. Think about what we just sang. Think about what we just read. Well, why don't you read it again? I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain interlude. I cried out to God and he helped me. I need to pause a little bit. I need to, I need to push the pause. And you know what else I need to do? I need to turn the volume down on everything else. I need to turn the volume down, maybe even on the things I'm listening to, maybe on the TV and in the car. Maybe I need to turn the, the, the volume down on, on, on my phone. Maybe I need to turn the volume down. Maybe I need to shut the ringer off for a little while. Maybe I need to put it on do not disturb so I can stop and listen and pause and breathe and be still and know that God is who he says he is. Don't forget that God is in control. But sometimes we need to pause things for just a moment. We need to get away from everything for just a moment. We need to have some time alone with God. And don't forget what he's done. We need to remind ourselves of the good things that he's done. Remember what he has done, how he's been faithful. Oh, you know what, God, he's been faithful to me before. He's done this before. Last time I was all worried about something and God came through and he was there for me and he's never left me and he's never forsaken me. I need to remember what he's done for me because he's been faithful. He's been there. He's been my ever-present help in time of need. So why do I need to be afraid? Why do I need to live my life in fear and in worry? See, peace in the present is found in the pause. I need to pause things. I need to breathe. As I was walking this morning praying, that was something God just put on my heart. He says, I just want you to, just to breathe a little bit. I was getting worked up about some things. I was getting anxious and worried. Just stop, just stop, just breathe, just pause. And know that I'm here, know that I'm here with you. We need to be aware of the present. Be aware of the present. You know, you've been given a present and it's the present. You've been given this gift of right now. This is one life that we have to live and you've been given this moment. You've been given today. Let's not live it in fear. Let's not live it in worry and doubt and anxiety. Let's live it in peace, the peace that God brings to us, that, that, that gives us. So often we're, we're just trying to get somewhere in life. We're, we're not focused on the present. We're focused on where we're going or where we've been. Have you ever driven somewhere before and had no recollection of the journey to get there? Anybody have that? Okay, wow. Wow, that's more like that. That's scary. Isn't that scary? Put your hands up again for a minute. Look around. Look at, man, that's a lot of people. You've driven places not knowing what you're doing. I remember this happened to me once very vividly. I, I don't know what, what state I was in. I was in a state of confusion, I'm sure. But I was driving a bus, a, a van full of, uh, of band members, and we were following our box truck, and we were driving through the night. We drove six hours, and I remember nothing about the entire trip. I was driving the whole thing. I, I remember zero of the trip. I don't know where we were. I don't know what state we were in. All I remember was I was following this thing, and I just hope we get there eventually. And, and this is kind of scary because our mind is wandering to something else. Instead of being in the present, instead of being in the moment, We're living in shame of the past or we're living in fear of the future and we have no peace right now in the present. We lay down at night to go to sleep and we can close our eyes, but we can't stop our mind. And it's winding and it's going and and I got fears of tomorrow and I got shame from the past and I've got guilt and I've got anxieties and I've got worries. But David, what did he say? What did he say when 10,000 people were coming after him? He says, "I, I just laid down, I slept like a baby. 
Slept like a baby. Well, may, hopefully not like a baby because our baby's up a lot at night. Um, he says, I slept good and I woke up and I was refreshed because God was watching after me. And we lay there and we can't sleep and we have no peace. And Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, you will keep in what? Perfect peace. Not just peace. This is perfect peace. See, see there's a peace that the world brings that's not perfect. But in Isaiah, he says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. See, here, here's some contingencies again. I will keep you in perfect peace, God is saying. But the first step is that you need to trust in me. The second step is you need to fix your thoughts on me. What are you fixing your thoughts on? Are you fixing your thoughts on, on the news? Because if you're fixing your thoughts on the news, it's no wonder you have no peace in your life. Uh, a good friend of mine, I was talking to, said, said, yeah, every night I go to sleep with, uh, with CNN on the background. I'm like, how in the world do you sleep like that? I'm like, do you ever wake up and like something horrible's on? He's like, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm like, how do you do this? We, we, what are we feeding ourselves? What are we fixing our thoughts on? What, what entertainment are we consuming? in our life? What, 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 what websites are we going to? What are we fixing our thoughts on? Are we fixing our thoughts on, on work and how to get ahead and, and, and the drama going on there? Are we so focused on, on school and, and, and getting good grades and, and trying to live up to someone else's expectations for our life? Or are we so fixated on money and how to get more of it and, and because then maybe we'll just go out and spend it on other things that we don't need and we're so fixated on these things? Scripture says, don't fix your thoughts on those. It says, fix your thoughts on God. Fix your thoughts on things that are good and admirable and wholesome and peaceful. This is what we need to fix our thoughts on. And we wonder why we don't have peace in our life. But what are we thinking about? In your notes, you can write this down, that we cannot have a peaceful life without peaceful thoughts. I just want peace in my life. What are you thinking about? If all you're thinking about is the bad things, all we're thinking about is the negative, it's no wonder we have no peace. So your thoughts determine your level of peace. Now, I'm not saying this is easy. I'm not saying this is something we can just turn on and turn off because it can be a very difficult thing, but it can take some, some focused, concentrated effort saying, what am I going to think about? What am I gonna fix my thoughts on? What happens when something goes wrong in your life? Do we gravitate towards worry and doubt? Well, what does your internal dialogue sound like? Did anybody here talk to yourself or am I the only one? Okay, everybody does. You know, I say I only talk to myself when I need good advice. Um, but, uh, uh, no, but how do we talk to ourselves? Something's going wrong. You know, oh, well, what, what am I going to do? Why is this happening? Oh, I'm just worthless. I'm just a failure. I'm no good at this anyway. I bet everything bad's going to happen. Oh, I bet I'm going to get sick and die. You ever get a headache and go and Google that online? Like, man, you Google it, like, what happens when I have a headache and my eyes right at the same time? You've got brain cancer. You know, it's like, like what in the world? And, and, and we're so worried about things. We're focused on the wrong things. What do we gravitate towards? See, see the devil wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your peace. What robs your peace? You know what robs your peace? Worry. The more we worry, the less peace we have. Well, I'm just a worrier. Well, then you're not a very peaceful person, are you? Because a peaceful person and a worrying person can, cannot be the same person at the same time. You cannot be peaceful and be worrying at the same time. It says in Philippians 4, it says, don't worry about anything. What does scripture say is acceptable to worry about? Nothing. Don't worry about anything. Underline that. Don't worry about anything. Instead, what are we supposed to do? Underline that next word. Instead, pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. What are we doing? We're hitting the pause. I'm going to pause. Interlude. Stop. Hold on. I'm going to pray. Instead of worry, I'm going to pray. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. We need to tell God what we need. We need to tell him, God, this is what I need. This is what I'm up against. I, I'm quite frankly, I'm, I'm afraid right now. I'm worrying. I'm fearful of the future, but I, I'm going to tell you what I need. In your notes, when you pray, it, it doesn't just change things. It also changes you. It changes you. In fact, your situation may not even change immediately, but God will begin to do the work in you. He'll begin to calm you. Even when you're in the middle of a storm, he can calm you. See, when you pray, you can begin to experience God's peace in the present. You can experience it in the pause. You can get guidance and direction. But sometimes we just barrel on through. Like, I don't have peace. So I'm just going to go this way. Sometimes when we don't have peace in our life, it's because we're going the wrong way. 
We're doing the wrong thing. Why don't I have peace doing this horrible thing in my life? God said, hey, I want you to get back in line. I want you to stop. I want you to pray. In fact, several years ago, a friend of mine came to me and says, hey, I got a great investment opportunity for you. And you should always stop and reconsider these things when somebody says that, right? He goes, I got this great investment opportunity. It's, it's got all this money. You just put a little bit in, and you're getting paid back all this money. And why don't you invest some money in it? And I put a ton of money into it. I'm like, I don't know. And, and it sounded too good to be true. And, you know, they say if it sounds too good to be true, you shouldn't do it. And, and although I wanted to do it, I didn't have a piece about it. A couple months later, he called me up. He says, you ever heard of a, of a Ponzi scheme? <laughs> like, I just lost a bunch of money. It's like, it's a good thing you didn't invest in that. I'm like, well, I just didn't have a peace about it. Sometimes when we go down the wrong path, God allows us to not experience peace because he wants us to, he wants to redirect us. It says in verse seven, then though, then you'll experience God's peace. Don't worry, pray, give thanks to God. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. It says, it won't make sense. You're so peaceful. It doesn't make sense why you're so peaceful. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. See, this is an internal peace. This is a peace not based on circumstances. This is a peace not based on the situations that you're going through in life. You can have peace even in the middle of conflict. You can have peace. You can have peace even through a breakup or a divorce or getting laid off or laying somebody off. You can still have peace even in these things, even in failure, even in the ups and downs. You can have peace because no one, no one can take away the peace that God gives you, but you can give it up if you want to. You can give up the peace and choose to worry. Choose fear. Choose worry. So his peace will guard your heart. His peace will guard your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. What are we supposed to fix our thoughts on? Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. What are you thinking about in life? Are you focused on the things that cause fear or are you focused on the God of peace? See, there is power in the moment. We are all living in a moment and there is power in this present. And in your notes, God wants you to have peace now. He wants you to have it now. Not some random time in the future, not tomorrow. He wants you to have peace now. It's not just peace for the past. Last week we talked about how to get peace from the past and how God uses our scars to point other people to him. But God wants you to have that now. He doesn't want you just to have peace for the future. He wants you to have peace now for today because God has given you this moment and he wants you to live in peace. In Psalms 119, we'll close with this verse. It says, those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Do you love God's instructions? Do you love God's word? Do you read God's word on a regular basis? You wanna have peace in your life? You know what I challenge people? I challenge people all the time with my 555 challenge and it's simply taking five minutes a day praying or five minutes a day reading scripture, five minutes a day praying, five minutes a day pausing hitting the pause button, just being quiet, listening. 15 minutes total. Heard somebody the other day said so they dropped it down to like the 3-3-3 three, three, three challenge. I'm like, you cheater. It's only 15 minutes. But, but anyhow, it's okay. If you got to drop it down 3-3-3, three, 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 God bless you. I'm like, now somebody's going to say, I do the one 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 challenge. Um, five, 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 five minutes reading, five minutes praying, five minutes in silence. And it's pausing. Do you love God's word? It says, those who love his instruction, those who love God's word, will have peace and they will not stumble. See, God's word will bring peace into your life. God's word will bring healing into your life. God's word is full of promises like the one we read in Romans that we see that God will work everything together for good of those who love him and are called to his purpose. Final thing in your notes is that we need to speak words of truth to the storms in our life. We need to speak words of truth. When we're going through storms, we need to speak these words of truth that God is for me not against me, that I can sleep in peace when God has my back, that God will work all things together for good. You know, one of the most powerful stories in scripture was when, when Jesus and his, his disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee and, and a storm came up. And the storm came up and threatened to, to capsize the boat and all the disciples were panicking and they were afraid. And Jesus, you know what he was doing? He was sleeping in the boat, sleeping in the boat. Why? Because he was at peace. 
He was at peace in the boat. He was sleeping. And he woke up and they said, don't you care? We're going to die. We're going to die here. Jesus looked at the storm. He said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. He spoke to the storm and immediately the storm was still. Maybe God needs to calm a storm in your life today. Maybe we need to speak some truth to the storms in our life and say, peace, be still, because God is giving you peace now. He's given us his word, and we need to pause. We need to pause to pray and pause to read and pause to listen and say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give you thanks because he's given you peace. He's working it out. He's working it for your good because you love him and you're called to his purpose. So why should we get worried? Why should I get worried anymore? Did you know that God is not worried? God is not worried about the problem that you face. God has not been caught off guard by the situation in your life. God is not afraid. God is not saying, oh my goodness, there's 10,000 people coming after David. What are we going to do? He wasn't worried for a moment. You think God's worried? Don't worry, but pause. Pause and pray. Pause and read. Pause and listen for his peace and his patience and his guidance because he is He's the Prince of Peace. He is the Lord of Lords, and he's bringing you peace today. He's bringing you peace, even in the turmoil, even in the storm, even in the difficulty. Don't worry. He said, don't worry. I want you to pray. Don't worry, because I'm here. I'm here with you. God isn't worried, but he's bringing you peace. So let's live in the peace that he's given us today. Let's not worry, but let's live in his peace. So, God, we come to you now, and we thank you that you're bigger than our problems because our problems feel bigger than us. But we know that you are bigger and that you aren't worried. You're not worried even for a moment. You haven't been caught off guard even for a moment. So we trust you and we come to you now. If you're here today and you don't have peace right now, God wants to give you peace. But before we can experience the peace of God, we need to experience peace with God. Scripture says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Won't you call on his name today? Say, Jesus, you're my Lord. If you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you say with your mouth that he is your Lord, then you will be saved. Won't you call on his name and say, Jesus, you are my Lord. Whatever situations you're facing now, whatever worries you're facing now, whatever anxieties you're facing now, I, I, I don't mean to, 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 to belittle them or to put them down or to lessen them, but let's hand them over to God now and say, God, I can't carry this anymore. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So God, we give you our burdens, we give you our worries, we give you our fears, we give you our anxieties, we give you all of these things, and we ask you in return to give us your peace. Give us your peace, which surpasses all understanding. We can't even figure it out, but we know that you are giving us peace. Let us rest in your peace. Let us live in your peace. Let us be here in this moment in your peace because we know that you love us. We know that you're here with us, guiding us each step of the way. So we say to the problems in life, peace be still. To the storms in life, peace be still. We say to the difficulties, the financial situations, the relationship problems, peace be still. And we trust you that you are bringing peace now. So Lord, we leave our worry behind because you're not worried. You are bigger, you are stronger, you are powerful. You've said you'll never leave us and never forsake us. And when we go through that dark valley, when we go through the waters, when we go through the fires, that you will be there. So we choose not to worry because you're not worried and we will trust you because you are bigger and you are better than everything we face in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen.